Well, I'm driving today, so I'm not really going to be looking at the camera. But I just wanted to talk about casting our cares on the Lord and just, you know, His faithfulness and His goodness. It's, it's like I no longer worship into that place where I'm just a little bit satisfied, but to that point where I just don't even stop where it just becomes so ecstatic and so natural just to remain in that place of worship all day. And that doesn't mean you don't do dishes or whatever. It just means your eyes are fixed on Him, your mind's fixed on Him and while you're doing dishes or while you're studying or whatever you have to do for that day. And um, you know when you accomplish things out of a place of, oh, I have to do this and I'm like really, really anxious and I'm doing this so then I'll feel better after it's done. And then that's almost kind of deceptive because it's not really making you feel better once you get it done. It's just like strive, 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 strive. And um, Christ came to set us free. And so when we just live in love, suddenly it's so much easier to get things done. It's not even a hard thing to get things done. And it just, it becomes a joy, everything. And so the scripture says to rejoice in the Lord always. And it says, again, I say rejoice. And so a lot of people say, okay, that's something I have to do. I have to do. And no, it's, it's something that you rest in. And it's something that um, doesn't become burdensome, but it becomes so light. And you realize the reason why that was written is to bring you fulfillment, to bring you life. Because God is so good and he desires just for us to walk fully in life as he is life. And so um, another scripture was about be anxious for nothing. But in prayer and in supplications, let your request be known to God. And I feel like that's not just a one-way thing. It's not like, okay, we got my laundry list. All right, I read my laundry list to God, and now it's done. And okay, now I can I accomplish that scripture, and I can go about my day. No, it's not even like that. It's about um, communing your heart with Him, walking in the garden with Him, asking what He thinks about it, what He thinks about the issues of the day, and just practical stuff. And because He thinks about things differently, than him, He's not even anxious for anything. I mean, it'd be kind of hypocritical for Him to tell us in the Bible not to be anxious for anything, yet He's anxious for things. So Christ is not fearful. And so uh, when we just let that enter into that reality of Christ um, being completely peaceful in every situation, and not seeing that as something unattainable, but seeing that for something that we were created for. Because we were not created for fear. We were absolutely created for love. And just knowing that that place of His grace at all times. And that, you know, the Lord is ever before me. And just focusing on that reality. Yes, New Covenant's even better. Like, He is inside of me. And it's, it's like, it's not like I have to wait for Him to come down. It's like he's already here and when I realized that suddenly I just started experiencing it because faith is believing that it is you know and that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him that he is already here and it's almost like a paradox of seeking him yet um, him already being here but it's like seeking to get to know him more intimately and just resting in his embrace and um, this whole Christianity thing really boils down to love love, 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 where Christ first loved us. And so if we just go down to that place of love, rather than trying to produce love and trying to strive, 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 no, it's not striving, it's it's Christ. And uh, focusing on his efforts, because, you know, we can't do anything on our own. Even Jesus said, because he came to earth as a man, he stripped himself as a, of his divinity. He said, I can do nothing but my, by myself. And I could do nothing in myself. So he completely relied on the Father. So as he relies on the Father, we rely on him. And um, it's only out of that place that we can do the stuff. I mean, the Christian life is impossible to do without love. It just is. Well, frankly, it's just impossible. And some people look at it and say, I can't do that. And they're absolutely right. You can't do it. You can't try to be loving and joyful and peaceful in all circumstances and rejoice and be happy. I mean, um, think about this where in Acts where they just got a good whipping and um, they're rejoicing and praising God. I mean, that's supernatural. And um, because it's almost like, you know, when you've had a really rubbish day and somebody just does the nicest thing for you and it kind of makes up for the day. Well, um, Christ is above that even more. 
so Christ did the nicest thing for us. I mean, literally the most awesome, amazing thing. I mean, he saw our failures and he said, okay, I'll take your place. And then he died and he restored it all. And he said, okay, I read you a shame and I call you righteous. And um, just to live in that freedom, just to live in that light is amazing. And the gospel is absolutely amazing. And I forgot where I was going with that, but whatever, I'm a Holy Ghost rabbit trail right now. And um, just focusing on his face in the midst of the storm. And like even as in, in the old covenant, you know, before Christ died, everything was old covenant. And Peter was able to do the impossible by focusing on Christ. On the outside of him, how much more are we able to do the impossible by focusing on Christ on the inside of us and the Holy Spirit helping us? And so that's why he said that it's going to be better when I leave because then, you know, you're, it's like Jesus mobile everywhere all at once through the Holy Spirit. And so when we focus on that, even though we slow down, the person in front of me is really slow. And when you focus on that, suddenly big things don't seem that big. And so Christ did it all. And so when we look at the awesomeness of everything that he restored, suddenly that overcomes all the badness of everything around us. And it doesn't really seem that big because, you know, he died and <sighs> overcoming death is absolutely impossible. And he did it. And so he, he accomplished the hardest thing ever. And oh, he was so traumatized by people around him. I mean, he was wounded by those around him. And they assumed the wrong things about him. They saw him wrongly. They rejected him. And, um... He did it all for us. He did it all for the price that we afforded him. And it wasn't some monetary gain. It wasn't for his own um, self. It was for us because we were considered the prize. We were considered worth it. That he would go through all that punishment, all that affliction. And so there's almost this thing like false humility that says I'm not worth it. Or the other person is worth it more than I am. You know, Christ thinks so highly of he died and he suffered and not just so you could be clean from your sins and those things weighing you down but so you could just do everything that he did and that you could walk in just complete love and rid of fear rid of that torment and you know Christ first loved us and so it's not even something that we can manufacture on our own the only love that we have is responding to him because of what he did. And so when you realize that, it's just like the burden's lifted off your shoulder of trying harder to be a better Christian or that type of thing. And um, Christianity was really meant to be fun, you know? Um, God, is, God is a lot of fun. And it would be really weird for him to create somebody to torment. You know, God doesn't torment people. He provided a way of escape from torment. This is something I like. It's just the Holy Spirit GPS, and I don't know where I'm going, and I just go with what feels light, you know, in my heart. What feels like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Because I'm asking, and I'm tuned into His Spirit inside, because our spirits are one. We think exactly the same inside of the Spirit, and my mind is just being transformed by that reality. So. And it's really awesome that he gave me a way to do that through his spirit and our spirit being one. And, oh, we got a turn here. And you know that scripture verse about perfect love casts out all fear. I was just, that scripture did not make sense to me for years because I was just, I was in like commanding mode of commanding fear to go because that's what had worked for me, but then it stopped working all the time. I mean, you know, still afraid of some things, but just not afraid 24 7. And so, um, yeah, just getting a revelation of that love. And it's, it's even, it's hard to describe, you know? Let me go forward again.